Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday. Uh, I am having a great time uh, this holiday season, getting ready for Christmas. It's now Christmas Eve. Uh, all the presents for my family have been uh, wrapped, and uh, fortunately everything is calm and quiet here at the moment. But I wanted to get off uh, a very quick episode dealing with Christmas. And I thought, what better than to give a an account of Christmas written by a Mississippi soldier during the Civil War. And uh, fortunately, uh, I found a great account of Christmas of 1861 written by a soldier in the 18th Mississippi Infantry. His account was published in the Memphis Daily Appeal on January 7th, 1862. And at the time this account was written, the 18th Mississippi was camped at Leesburg, Virginia, and the men of the regiment were spending their very first Christmas away from home. And the letter opens uh, as follows. While I now write, preparations are going on for winter quarters, and the sounds of axes and falling timber are resounding through the weeds on every hand. Gamecocks tied to the tent by one leg are crowing defiantly in all directions. Chicken fights are progressing in every sunny spot, while violins and circles of dancers are scattered in every warm and dry location, while others roar out bacchanalian and warlike strains from every tent. Christmas! Far away from friends and home, these brave and simple-hearted volunteers make the welkin ring with their boisterous mirth. Huge logs are crackling and roaring on campfires, pots are boiling and bubbling and hissing for eggnog, beef and pork are frying, and bread is baking. The regimental band has been imbibing and is now playing away with great gusto, while some have formed uh, sets for quadrilles to be danced by the firelight. And then he continues, It is Christmas! Groups are reading the newspapers and deciding the fate and progress of the war. Officers and men are hobnobbing over the social glass. Negroes are busy and gaseous over a pyramid of pots and pans, while the ear-splitting laughter and incessant rolling of eyes gives positive assurance that they have made acquaintance with something stronger th than water. Boxes, bales, and trunks, and parcels have come from home. Coats and blankets and boots and hats are hawked about and swapped and sold and tossed about, while long letters from the governor and short ones from sweethearts are read and praised and laughed at, while payday coming on the morrow, cheers are given for the quartermaster and stentorian groans for the inartistic or tardy cash. It is Christmas. Friends with mysterious bundles and parcels hid under the coat arrive from town and dive therewith into the depth and recesses of the tent and hide them under the straw. Friends with turkeys and fowl and a hundred other things meet together and do hungry justice to the same, while songs and stories go the rounds of tents and camps and everybody laughs and everybody is jolly except the poor and unfortunate frost-covered sentinel who with muffled form and a very red nose walks his lonely rounds and grins at what he cannot then enjoy. It is Christmas time, and even the lean, lank, solemn-looking parson unbends in dignity for the occasion, and while forming one of a circle around the blazing logs, cup in hand, essays to joke, but being coughed down for the attempt, winks ominously at the eggnog and apostrophizes largely on the vanity of things generally. The colonel, too, and the lieutenant, and the shrill-toned, brisk, and soldierly adjutant smoke their Havanas on the portico of headquarters with solemn dignity, while the French bandmaster electrifies a knot of youngsters with all sorts of impossibilities on the trombone. It is Christmas time, and coming but once a year, none care for expenses. The Yankees are the last persons thought of. Cockfighting and eggnog and eggnog and cockfighting, interspersed with songs and eggnog and storytelling, are the prime order of things just now. And despite all the parson says, and notwithstanding the starchiness of full-blown officials, rye and egg fruit are decidedly in the ascendant, and more than that has no baneful effect 
since it simply lends to revive old associations and strengthen those bonds of brotherhood which have indissolubly linked us forever to the fortunes of our country. And that, that's the end of the letter. It just, it just kind of stops there. And uh, I thought I would close with a picture of the, the flag of the 16th Mississippi Infantry. And the writer of this uh, letter only signed it uh, with his initials, TEC. But fortunately, I was able to figure out who TEC was. These initials stood for Thomas E. Caffey, who was a private in Company D, 18th Mississippi Infantry. They were the, known as the Hamer Rifles from Yazoo County. And Caffey had enlisted in the Hamer Rifles at Yazoo City in May of 1861 for 12 months service. Uh, the 25 year old was a native of London, England, and he listed his occupation as teacher. Uh, at the end of his year's enlistment, uh, he applied for a discharge uh, stating that uh, he had to sail back to England to take care of the estate of his deceased parents. In 1864, Caffey published a book about his experience in, experiences in the war entitled Battlefields of the South, From Bull Run to Fredericksburg. And I'm happy to say this book is available for free download on Google Books if you should care to, to uh, take a look at it. Uh, Caffey was a pretty good writer, and uh, his, his account of his uh, one year of service with the 18th Mississippi is well worth uh, a read. And uh, just to close up, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful holiday and a, and a blessed new year. Um, I started this uh, uh, channel in uh, 2021. And uh, as the year comes to a close, uh, I've got almost 200 subscribers, which is more than I ever thought I would have. Um, from the comments I've gotten, they've been uh, uh, most gratifying. I think people are really enjoying uh, the content. So uh, uh, I just want to thank you all for uh, for uh, tuning in and uh, for all of your, your kind comments. And, uh, and uh, uh, I really look forward to uh, bringing you more episodes in the new year. And uh, uh, I'll just close by saying Merry Christmas. <laughs>